burden upon people. Literally, you can't have no privacy anymore. People have to go to the bathroom. You are, you are a burden. So the ice is a blessing. So I, I, I always mention example that two million, no one says, you know what, if you give me two million pounds, I will remember you Shamsi, all the time. I will, you know what, I will say thank you all the times. But if I give you two million pounds, you will never exchange your eyes. Because your eyes is more valuable. But so we are, why we are not grateful? Why are we not grateful to God, to the Creator right now, instead of saying, you know what, I, have, I need to go to work, I need to do this. Something, why? We should be grateful to Him. But in order for you to be grateful to the Creator, you want to be grateful to Him according to who? To your way, to my way? No, to His way. That's why I sent the Prophet Muhammad, before that Jesus, Moses. Let me give you some prophecy that Prophet Muhammad said to know that Islam make clear sense. One of the prophecies he said, and sorry for taking your time. Yeah, sorry, because you know, yeah. one of the prophecies he said, there will come a time when interest, you know interest, usually, yeah, will become widespread. Even if you are not involved directly, will affect your life. Will affect your life. You remember, uh, Fabio, yeah? Prophet Muhammad alayhi existed 1,400 years ago. There was not any indication to indicate that will occur. You know, now, by default, if you open a bank account, you are involved in interest how men that existed 1400 years ago knew about something that we can observe right now another prophecy that prophet muhammad mentioned 1400 years ago he said there will come a time when you see the barefoot arab man barefoot arab man the shepherds in the arab peninsula they will start sorry they will start competing in building tall buildings again prophet muhammad alayhi existed 1400 years ago there was no way to know that will occur let me ask you now where is the tallest building in the world? Bush Khalifa, where? Dubai. It's in Dubai. It's in Dubai. 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 Dubai 50 years ago was a pure desert, let alone 1,400 years ago. Who do you know who's competing with them? Saudi is competing with them. Saudi is another country that Prophet mentioned about. Yeah? Let me make it let me give you this, yeah? Summarize everything to understand, yeah? Islam came to preserve five things. This life, this universe, everything. Islam came to preserve five things in order for our life to be good. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? Paganism, atheism, polytheism is forbidden Islam. Because when you do not worship the correct God, you start worshiping the false God. The false God doesn't have enough knowledge, doesn't have the correct knowledge about his creator's creation. Because he never created it. So you will get the wrong information how to live according to the fake God, then you will live in contradictions, in corruptions. Or you start following your desires and that will cause corruptions. And we can see that right now in our time. People wake up, a man fixes a woman, a woman fixes a man, a person fixes a dog, a dog fixes a chicken. You know, it's going crazy, man. It's going, literally, it's going nuts. That's the reality. It's funny, but it's going nuts. Literally, someone can wake up, identify himself as today. You know, he says, today I'm a crocodile. I believe I'm a human, I believe I'm a crocodile, but trapped in a human body. Yeah. And you have to accept and you have to respect me. Otherwise, you're a bigot. Look how crazy it's going, bro. And that's the way, it and people are dying of depression, stress, drugs, and everything. So when you, when you worship a false God, or you worship someone beside God, corruption will come. Islam came to preserve intellect, sound reasoning. That's why alcohol and drugs forbidden. Islam came to preserve money, wealth, wealth, not just money, uh, gold, everything, wealth. That's why gambling is forbidden, interest is forbidden. Islam came to preserve lineage. That's why fornication, adultery is forbidden. So Islam came to preserve five things. If we don't preserve these five things, what will happen to us? Let me ask you. If you, if you drink alcohol, is it bad for you or good for you? Alcohol. Alcohol is bad for us individually and collectively. They said the NHS is bleeding because of alcohol. Yeah? Drugs, is it good for us or bad for us? It's bad. Interest. Interest, you know what is interest? Interest, you make the rich richer, poor poorer. Is it good or bad? It's bad because why are you manipulating the people? Gambling, is it good or bad? It's bad, collectively and individually, okay? Now, fornication is good or bad? You know, I'll tell you, you know, I'll give you proof it's bad. You know there's, there's a clinic for abortions. You know why? Is that, you know, basically, children being killed every day. Why? Because a woman had fornication with a boy. The boy doesn't care. He just wants to sleep. And the woman, she, cannot, she can't be bothered. She, she goes, kill a child. Kill a soul. Is that good to do something like that? Because if they were married, they would not do that. Except in Islam, we have abortion out of necessity. Which means, if the doctor said to her, listen, if you carry on this pregnancy, that will kill you. That will kill you, yes? 
before blowing the soul, yes. So this school of, you know what this school? Five destroyers of societies, which in every country, generally speaking, they allow it, they promote it, propagate it. So now if Islam come to preserve mankind and to make them live a good life, why people hate Islam? There's two types of people hate Islam. Either they're ignorant, they don't know about Islam, or those who are making money from the suffering of the people. Those who are making money to make themselves richer and everyone poorer and they don't care if they're only good or bad. That's why if I'm in a city, imagine I'm in London, yeah? And I own banks, interest. I own gambling places. I own uh, alcohol shops and everything, yeah? And you come as a Muslim, you start, you start, you start telling people about Islam. I'm going to look at you as... Sabr, sabr, habibi, sabr. Sabr, shway, ya akhi. Uh, uh, they're gonna look at you. I'm gonna look at you as an evil man, because even though you're a good man, you come in to save people from destruction. So, so therefore, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna utilize my money to make you look bad. And this was happening now with Islam. Those in power or those who are making money from the suffering of the people, they are utilizing their money to make Islam look bad, even though Islam is good for everyone. Does it make sense what I said to you? Is it clear? You know. So if you accept and you say, you know what, it makes sense. Why don't you become a Muslim? Why don't you sub submit to your creator? Worship your creator. You know, how old are you, by the way? You're not going to be here forever, brother. Regardless, even 50, 60. You know, and, and you know why you're from Portugal, a country that Muslims were there for 800 years. Portugal. Uh, 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 Portugal, yeah, Portugal. Orange. And you know what happened to the Muslims there? Do you know? They were, they were burned life at stake, yeah. Yeah, the Christian Catholic, when they came to, when they, when they, when they tried to take over, Andalusia and Port Portugal, they were killing the Muslims, not just the Muslims, even the Jews, you know? That's why there's many Spanish and, and Portuguese, when they go back to try to trace back the lineage, they go back to the Muslims. Even for the sake of living there, if it makes sense, it's clear. And you know, you said, you know what, yes, if I give you two million pounds, you're going to remember me all the time. You're going to be grateful to me all the time. So why would not remember and be grateful to the Creator who created us? You know, if you, that's why I said, I said, look, Fabi, if it makes sense, and you believe it's true, it makes sense, perfect sense. We need to prophet Muhammad. Look, we have the best, we, we have politicians, politicians that study at, at the best universities, but yet they cannot resolve the problems that we are facing. And we have a man that existed 1,400 years ago who couldn't read and write, yet he came with the best legislation. And he said, from who? From the creator of everything, the Almighty. And if you accept that, you, the Almighty will not choose a lie to convey his message. He will choose a truthful one. And let me give you a story about Prophet Muhammad, why he's a truthful man. During his lifetime, Prophet Muhammad saw some eclipse happen. You know eclipse? Yeah. His companions, when they saw eclipse happen, his son, the same day his son passed away, died, yeah? You know, they tried to connect, connect the dots. Prophet Muhammad, I saw some son died. Eclipse happened. So therefore, the reason there's eclipse, because his son passed away. If he was a liar, a liar would utilize any opportunity to back up his lies, yeah? What he said? He said, no, what has happened has nothing to do with no one's life, no one's death. It's from God. And I'll give you another one. You know Christopher Columbus? Christopher Columbus, when he went to South America, when the South Americans, they didn't know that time what caused eclipse. Yeah, what caused eclipse, yeah? So what he did, he utilized the ignorance to tell them God's angry with you. That's why this eclipse. So give me your land. Look to the Christopher Columbus, how he utilized the event and he utilized the ignorance of the people and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Trustworthy and truthful. He didn't say they're ignorant, let me lose it. Let me tell them no. You see, I'm, I'm a messenger of God. Look what God did because of my son. He's not in need of that because Allah gave him enough proofs to show him he's a prophet of God. You know, like I said, but Fabio, how many people left the house and never come back? How many people died? You know, we're here for a purpose. We are here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And worshiping Islam doesn't mean staying in the mosque 24-7, no. Working to provide for yourself and your family is worship. Taking care of your mother, even if she's not Muslim, is worship. Worship is a comprehensive speech word. Not just a prayer in the mosque. No, that's part of worship. But worship is many, it comes in a different shapes and forms. You know, as long as you're doing it too, please the creator who created you. So that's why I invite you to become a Muslim. You know? You wanna become... I, only, I only came across your video last week, you know. Subhanallah, yeah, he told me. Yeah. And now you a real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is from God. Wallah, I believe from God. Maybe, maybe. It's not maybe from, do you know why? When I say that, because as a Muslim, I believe that. You know why? You watched my video not long ago. Now speaking to me, and I'm, I'm, we are reasoning, and you say, you know, it makes sense to you. That, bro, 
You know, here it's like, like just animals for our desires. Like, uh, let me make, I'll give you another example. Imagine the house here, yeah? and a fire, there's a fire. You are surrounded with a fire. May Allah forbid, yeah? You try your best to save yourself. Everything. But you couldn't save yourself. You gave up. You feel, you know what? I'm finished. I came and I saved your life from the fire. What would you say to me? Hero. Huh? Hero, hero. Would you thank me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you remember me all the time? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to save you from the fire, but that fire is not forever. Not like the hell fire. So if you're going to remember me all the time, you call me a hero forever, why don't you worship Allah and remember Him and be grateful to Him, the one that gave you life for free? I never, I never gave you life. But the one who gave you life, you're too busy to show Him appreciation. You're too busy to worship him. But I'm a human being. If I saved your life, you'll never tell me I'm busy to, to say, say thank you to you. You see, I'm not blaming you. Of course, I'm blaming the, the, the environment that we're living in. We become very material. That's why when you focus, when you look, that's what Allah said in the Quran. Within yourself, there's signs. Signs. There's many blessings. You are a rich man, but you don't know. You can walk. You can see. You know, you, you, the air, you know, the air, the oxygen that we breathe in. You know, if you go to hospitals, they charge you big money. The Creator is giving it to you for free. But remember, the Creator is the most merciful, but also is the just. He has the anger. Based upon his anger, he created the hellfire. Based upon his mercy, he created paradise. But Allah is not going to make equal the evil ones with the good ones. The good ones, those, because as a Muslim, I believe if I was alive at the time of Jesus, the only way to get to God and to go paradise by following Jesus' teaching. Because he was the true Messiah, the Messenger of Allah. Before Jesus, Moses. And now the last of them is the Prophet Muhammad. You know the holy book, the Quran? The Quran. The, the Quran that we have now is the same the Quran that was given to the Prophet. Memorize. We have a Muslim tree that memorized the Quran. And Allah mentioned that in the Quran 1,400 years ago. And you know there is a huge war against Islam. Worldwide, globally. Media has been used in the Western world to wage a war against Islam. Yet the fastest growing religion on the face of the earth is Islam. Who is doing the job? It's Allah, the Almighty, the Most High. Because Allah mentioned that in the Quran. It's Allah who sent down Prophet Muhammad with Islam, the religion, in order for Islam to prevail other religions. And we can observe right now, Islam is a fast religion the face of the earth. If it makes sense to you, then what is it? when someone becomes Muslim, what is it? I bear witness. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah and by Wut Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. Start a new life, a life that you have a, a meaning, a, a life that based upon upon a purpose. You have a purpose now. You now you are the true meaning of a human being that has a creator and a servant, not a servant slave of your desires. You know, I'll call him a I'll call. You know, what I say always: when you be, becoming a Muslim doesn't mean you become perfect. I'm not perfect. All of us make mistakes. You know, I always give this example of the cake. If you eat the whole cake at once, what will happen to you? Imagine you have a big cake, big cake in front of you, and you eat all of it at once. What will happen? You get, no, you don't get, hopefully you get fat. You're going to get sick before that. Yeah, you're going you're to vomit. So to feel the sweetness of the cake, what you do? Bit by bit. Still, so the first foundation, if it's clear, makes sense. That's why I do invite you to Islam. On the day of judgment, you have no excuse to the Creator, and no one told him about Islam. Today is your chance, you know? But it's up to you. Do you want to become Muslim? Maybe, it's up to you. Maybe one day, maybe one day. Why is not today? Are you promised to live tomorrow? If you, look, look, Fabio, don't let Satan block you. From the Prophet Muhammad, he told us that when someone wants to become Muslim, Satan will try to stop him. I'm saying, look, if it makes sense. And you say, you know what, that makes sense. That it goes in line with my, my, my natural inclination, my sound reasoning. Why? You're going to say tomorrow after tomorrow. Except if you are guaranteed to live tomorrow. Are you guaranteed to live tomorrow? By you, more likely you can die tomorrow. So why are you gonna, you're going to die upon this belief, which is one of the greatest sins that a human being can commit? Because Allah said Allah will never forgive any sins. Uh, sorry, Allah forgive any sins except polytheism, paganism, disbelief. That is the greatest crime against the Creator, who has given you everything, your own existence by His virtues. But you I don't want to be grateful to Him. You know? And I just want to make something clear. I don't want to put pressure on you, but I'm trying to help you because I got a reward when you become a Muslim. You understand? Muslim, what it means? Muslim doesn't mean you become an Arab man, you become Somali. No, Muslim, you mean that you submit to your Creator. Now I submit to my Creator according to His will, not according to our wills. If I want to buy a gift for my mother, I'm, I'm going to buy a gift that my mother loves. 
know the gift that I love. Likewise, if I don't worship Allah, I'm going to worship him the way he loves. That's what Allah sent the Quran. فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَى Worship your Lord. I mean, worship your Lord, the meaning of his word. Worship your Lord as you have been commanded. Forget about these people, bro. When you die, you're going to be in the grave by yourself. Even your own parents will not be with you in the grave. That's why Prophet Muhammad said, visit the graveyard. It's a serious matter, you know. This matter we're talking about is a serious matter. It's a matter of hell and paradise. It's a matter of that God created this tremendous creation for him to be grateful, also to implement his name and attributes. By the end of the day, it's for you to choose to follow the truth or turn away from it. If it makes sense to you and you believe it's the truth, why are you going to leave it tomorrow? Alhamdulillah, I have a Muslim friend and you can learn step by step, bro. If I saved your life from a fire, you're not going to say, Shamsi, tomorrow I say thank you. You're not going to say that, are you? What are you going to say? Thank you, straight away. So if it makes sense, you believe it's the truth, well, lie is a big blessing. My family, some of my family become Muslims. Revert. I'm not a revert, by the way, yeah? But they become Muslims. This brother is a revert, you know? There's many people who revert, they become Muslims. Because Islam, it makes sense. Islam, that's why we believe every baby is born as a Muslim. What does it mean? To submit to the Creator. And guess what? Now, based upon hardcore science, it is established that children naturally are born to believe in the Creator. Prophet Muhammad said that 1,400 years ago. Again, how we knew that? Because from God. So if it makes sense, clear? Two testimonies that I bear witness, Muhammad the Messenger of Abu Witness, no one worthy worships Allah, Muhammad the Messenger of Allah. But again, Fabio, don't feel like pressured or something, but I'm saying if you believe the truth, make sense? You believe the truth? Alhamdulillah, khalas. Become Muslim, Alhamdulillah, wallah. If you, if you love your mother with your heart, when you say it, <laughs> we're going to become Muslim? I don't want to put pressure, bro. If you believe it's the truth, Allah, I don't pressure on you. But I'm saying, look, he's your friend here. I'm saying, look, if you believe it's the truth, if it makes sense to, to you, let me ask you, make it clear to you, yeah? Is this fun? Is this a fun? Yeah, yeah. You, is, it, is it true fun? Yeah. So if you believe it's the truth, why are you going to hold it? You profess it. Where, where are you from? Where are you from? South London. Where South? Where? I used to work there. I, I used to work, uh, what do you call it? I used to do uh, electric and gas inspector. I used to work in Shreem. There's a lot of Muslims there, alhamdulillah. You are surrounded with Muslims there, man. Alhamdulillah. Well, 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 again, brother, look, I don't want to put pressure, but, bro, I, I don't know how you believe is the truth. And you, you say, you know, I, one day I'm going to become Muslim, but you don't want to become Muslim now. That doesn't make any sense, bro. That you believe it. You believe. Then say it, profess it. No, it's my way. It's a cultural, cultural thing. Why? Because of your background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's not going to help you, bro. I mean, like, before, let us be honest, Fabio. Yeah. Do you think before the creator of this tremendous creation, you're going to tell him, I do not become Muslim because my culture? You think that's going to be a valid reason? Allahu mm -hmm. Akbar. You know it's not a valid reason. Well, like Prophet Muhammad told us, salam, when someone wants to become a Muslim, Satan will put any barriers just to block him. That like you mention a barrier that's blocking you to become Muslim, when I put it into test, that before the Creator, that would that be valid reason? He said no. How? But you know, Allah said, "Wa ma rasul illa al mubin." What is upon the messenger to convey the message? But because as a Muslim, I love good for you. I want to become Muslim, and it makes sense to you. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. No, you are welcome. No problem again. Inshallah, maybe another time. If you don't want to say it now, maybe Inshallah, Mala. Let me give you something. Let me give you something to read. I, I, I had a book. Where is my book? Oh, yeah, 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 shukran. Yeah. Let me give you something to read. If you have any questions about Islam, you're more than welcome to ask. Do you have any questions? Uh, not right now, but... No problem. Like I said, you can read, inshallah, but why don't you, when you leave, remember that any time you can live this life. You as a Muslim remind him as well, you know? The lie is, is a serious matter. That's why, you know, go visit the graveyard and you see. You know, like there's, there's a woman, that people ask her, where is the people gone? She said, go to the graveyard. They said to her, why you said that? She said, because I know when they go to the graveyard, they go nowhere. But people, they change houses. And the graveyard is going to be there until day of judgment. So, you know, that's why when you go to the graveyard, it gives you the right to this life. You know, imagine, let me tell you something. Yeah. Imagine all of us here. Imagine you're sleeping in your room tonight. You go to sleep tonight. Yeah. You, you, the last thing you remember, you're inside your room, laying down. Someone comes and pick you up without you realizing takes you to a far place in a mountain far and put you inside the cave and you don't even realize that when you wake up how are you gonna be 
it will be a mental problem. It will go crazy, man. You think, what? Prophet Muhammad told us when, a when, a, when the angel of death comes to the person, because you can be literally walking drop dead. Then they put him in a grave, which is called the life of the grave. Two angels will come to him and ask him, what is your religion? So they're not going to ask you, what is your nationality? Or what is your culture? No, what is your religion? Prophet yeah, said, so the, the disbeliever and hypocrite say, I don't know. I had people saying this. Then who is your Lord? If you used to worship football, you're going to say football. And likewise, what do you think about the man that was sent to you, which is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu That life is a different life. You're going to see two creatures in front of you, you never seen in your life. So are we ready for that? Allah said, do you think we created for without any purpose? Oh, man, we have purpose here. Allah, this matter we're speaking is a serious matter. There's a matter of you to decide, you're going to decide today if the people of the paradise or people of hell. But I pray, you know, when you go home, pray to the creator of everything. Say, guide me to your truth. All right, brother. Nice to meet you, five you, man. Hopefully, next time you come as a Muslim, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah, you know, inshallah already, man. I don't, I don't know, I don't know pressure anyway. We're not going, you're going to stay here? Uh, maybe, I don't know, yeah. we might go to get some food. Alright, we're going to pray, we're going to pray. Okay.